Okay, you're going to notice right away that I've uh, taken care to finger this in a higher position, fifth position, uh, because here in about uh, eight measures or so, we're going to have an example that we're going to really need to play up in a higher position if we're going to play it well. Um, so we'll just go ahead and start there. One, two, three, four. Also notice how I uh, played those three consecutive uh, upbeats at the end of the example uh, that are uh, on the upbeats, kind of shorter. Kind of helps make them groove a little better in the space. Kind of helps the syncopation breathe a little bit and not sound so forced. Okay, you get more of the same here. Um, let me play it. One, two, three, four. you'll notice is I shifted up to the seventh fret with my first finger for that D. That way I put my pinky in position to get that uh, C on the D string. So I went uh, that's another thing you can do is slide into that G. Gives it some style. I like it a little better than just leaving it plain. Okay, in these four measures you're going to see uh, the payoff of playing it in this higher position. You're going to get to uh, do this hammer on and pull off to make the 16th note uh, up here sound really effortless like this. So notice I can uh, use a pull off there. And I can get that really clean that way. And then I can get to the uh, G flat. That would be so troublesome down here. It would be quite a stretch. But it's not as much of a stretch when you're in sixth position. So that's why it makes a lot of sense to play all this stuff a little higher up on the uh, fretboard. Also notice to get to the um, D flat, I did a position shift. So I climbed up the fretboard right there and then on the way back down to the A flat I shifted again from that 6th fret to the 8th fret with the first finger for the second time to get back down and uh, don't forget when you go back up in the 4th measure that A flat becomes a, a natural now we've transitioned back to um, something that looks like a regular bass line we see a low F in the uh, uh, first measure right away, so we're going to definitely want to play that in first position. And it goes one, two, three, four. Now, one thing I'll note um, when you play in long notes, when you play bass, it's the most important time to count. You really want to subdivide, that way, you don't rush ahead. There's nothing worse. Than having a bass player that only plays half notes or whole notes in their part, but they can't arrive at beat one with everybody else. It's easy to count when you play the melody and you have to learn, you know, to play all these notes in a measure. 
when you just play one, two, or three notes in a measure, if they really count strong, when you practice this example, practice it subdivided. One and two and three and four and one. Well, you can be really careful not to uh, rush or drag. Okay, so the next bit, even though it's uh, more of a stereotypical bass line, does have some fingering considerations that you need to consider. Um, notice I'm playing uh, in a higher position right off. I like to do that when I have uh, eighth note kind of subdivided notes. It helps me control the length of them a little easier than I can in first position. There's more space usually between the uh, frets closer to the nut of the guitar. Uh, and it's harder to cut them off right when you lift your finger. That's why I like to do it right here in the closer to the middle of the guitar. I just feel it plays a little easier than down here too. So uh, the first two measures are quite easy because they're the same kind of shape. But one thing I want you to notice is when I played uh, the C uh, uh, to the G in the third bar, instead of playing the B flat and sliding down, uh, there, which would be fine, but the thing is I'm going to play an A-flat in the following example. So I don't want to play this note with my first finger, the B-flat, and then have to shift way up here really quickly to play the A-flat a beat apart. So what I would rather do is play this B-flat with my second finger on the 6th fret. That way on the next example I'll be able to play uh, with the first finger. That way I don't have to move a finger abruptly, and I can connect those low notes really smoothly. Okay, here's that A-flat uh, we were talking about in the last uh, example. So we have this A-flat. So notice I'm, I made the uh, E-flat on B3, I cut it a little short. And I did that because I went ahead and used that note to make my shift. Because... Um, the eighth notes there on beat four need more quickness and attention than um, that quarter note on beat three that's not going anywhere. So I use like the length of that that I'm cutting short on the third beat to help me shift to get to beat four on time. Same thing here. Yeah, exactly the same thing in the second bar. See, the shift happens after the D-flat. Shift. That makes it a little smoother. So here you have a uh, repeated rhythm two times in a row. Whenever you do that, you really want to subdivide to be sure they both sound the same and they're very even. One and two and three and four and one. Notice I make the uh, beat four in the first two measures a little shorter. I think it sounds uh, good like that. One, two, three, four, long, long, short, long, long, or long, long, short. You get that little uh, staccato on the fourth beat there. I think it uh, helps you not only prep for the next measure, but it kind of sounds stylistic with articulation too, so it's like a win-win situation. So using some similar ideas that we've looked at uh, with this bar, are these four measures? I play the A or the uh, B flat. I've thrown this at the uh, sixth fret again. And here it's okay to play that third beat a little uh, um, lighter to help you prepare to get the four and there at the end there on the third measure. And I played. Uh, That way the eighth notes can be connected with two fingers before you even have to play the second one. That way when you play eighth notes, you have all the left hand fingers over the notes that you're going to play before you even play them. This is a really important when you're working on your technique. You always want to look at, do I have a finger available to play the next note? Quit always thinking about the note that you're on and start looking ahead one, two, or even three notes ahead. and Make sure your left hand fingers are in position to where you can reach them. Okay, use the following uh, track I have with drums and a, um, I got the chords underneath playing on a uh, guitar part that I recorded. And I want you to try to really make the uh, excerpt here, this A2, I want you to make it groove all the way. 
You have to subdivide the eighth notes really strongly. The drum track will help you do that. And try to lock right in and blend right in. Try to fit right in the track and pretend like you're part of it. Pretend like you're part of the recording and every eighth note you want to lock right in with some other note.